Hello, everyone. This is Peri Noz. I'd like to welcome you all to our program that we prepare as Istanbul Policy Center Sabancı University Stiftung Mercator Initiative uh, in collaboration with Medioscope. Uh, today, we will be talking about heat waves. Uh, what are they? Who is affected by them? How can we prepare against them? What's their relation with climate change? And what should the authorities do? Uh, and I have two guests, two special guests with me today. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce our Mercator IPC Visiting Senior Fellow, Pierre Goslin, and um, he's currently working at the Quebec Public Health Institute on climate change issues. He coordinated joint Kronos INSPQ research program in climate change and health from 2004 to 2019. He was also in charge of the health component of the Quebec Action Plan on climate change in between 2007 2017 and he's a clinical professor in preventive medicine at Université Naval at Laval uh, and also uh, with Pierre as our Mercator IPC senior fellow we had a webinar in July on battling heat waves in hospitals and uh, in communities and also we are we were very fortunate to have him for our roundtable meeting in September with Jimit Shahin um, heat waves and preparation of heat our health action plans in cities uh, with the participation of influential actors, NGOs and local authorities, uh, which was also very successful. Um, so and thank you very much for being at our show, Pierre. And uh, my second uh, guest is a very well known figure in Turkey when it comes to climate change and public health issues, our IPC climate studies coordinator and public health specialist, uh, Ümit Şahin. Thank you very much, Amit, for being with us today, uh, as always. Um, Pierre, maybe if, if it's OK, we can start with you. Maybe we can talk a little bit more about, uh, in general terms, what is a heat wave and uh, who experienced them and how people get affected by them. And what is the relationship between heat wave and uh, climate change? Yes, um, thank you. The um, definition of heat wave is actually uh, not standard. Uh, you, you've got several definitions of heat wave. Um, but over the years, generally, most people agree that uh, three days uh, and more of uh, very hot uh, temperatures, that's usually over the 95th percentile of uh, uh, the experience of, of the preceding years. Um, in taking into account both uh, maximum uh, day, day uh, temperature and maximum night temperature, both are important. So that's what is now the, uh, the common definition. Some regions will use um, uh, higher percentiles if, you're, uh, if your population is used uh, to very warm temperature. Uh, some regions will use the 97 percentile or even higher. Um, and, and another um, uh, way of defining a heat wave is to take into account the extra mortality, extra death that are caused by, by such a heat wave and um, that, that uh, necessitates more uh, studies, more uh, uh, from the health sector to, to count uh, uh, the, the number of deaths and um, put them in relationship with, with the temperature. So that's um, more specific. Uh, you, you can examine uh, the different time uh, of heat wave in the sense that uh, um, the heat waves appearing early in the season will usually um, cause more deaths because people uh, physiologically are not accustomed yet to the, the, the warm temperature, while the ones um, that, that will maybe uh, appear in, in late summer, uh, end of August or September, um, can be uh, at least in, 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 uh, in, in uh, cooler countries like Canada, can, can be less uh, <laughs> Uh, problematic. So that's usually how you define a heat wave. Um, heat waves have uh, have been present um, uh, for for centuries. Uh, the problem with climate change is that they're becoming much more frequent and uh, much more severe. 
than they used to be. Um, for instance, um, we, we studied uh, in the last 15 years um, historic heat waves um, for Montreal in, in Canada, and we had something like uh, eight or 10, depending on, on in, in the last 30 years uh, until um, the year 2000, for say. Um, but in the last 10 years, um, we had one heat wave every year, and uh, last year we got four. Uh, last summer we got four heat waves. So it's um, really increasing in frequency in a dramatic fashion. Um, and all the same, um, the severity, as we've seen in, in France, for instance, uh, in 2003, and again in 2006, um, and, for, and for many countries in Europe, um, uh, the severity is, is increasing also um, quite dramatically too. Um, so altogether, uh, heat waves are important because we've seen that they kill. Uh, they can kill in the thousands of people. Um, that is, uh, it, it depends on, of course, on some conditions. Um, conditions being uh, the the length of the um, of the heat wave, like the one that struck Europe in in August 2003, was preceded by a very hot summer altogether and no rain. And then on top of that, in, in August, um, an extra uh, layer of warmth happened. So um, that created, people were not prepared, nobody was prepared that time. And um, it led to really, literally, um, about 70,000 extra deaths, mostly in the, um, old people. Um, can be your mother, your, 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 your grandmother, uh, or, or grandfather, uh, people not not specifically um, about to die, um, but people that are fragile, uh, have some chronic medical conditions, and that um, the heat wave just um, precipitates uh, for, for a few days um, in a dangerous zone, and some of them die, of course. Um, other people we've seen um, uh, to, to be uh, quite affected um, by heat waves um, are uh, workers, outside workers, outdoors uh, workers, people working in the construction, in road building, um, people working in very hot environments, uh, firemen, for instance, or, or cooks in, in a closed restaurant. Um, and uh, here in, in uh, in Canada, we've seen young people in their 20s going out uh, for to planting trees in in, um, in, for, in for cut areas of, of forestry, and um, uh, they were uh, going out in in the early season May um, with a heavy load, um, not enough water, not enough training, and we had a, a few deaths. Um, even last summer um, in in, uh, in Quebec City, um, there was a worker uh, on, on a construction site that was caught in the basement and uh, working with, with uh, concrete. And at the end of the day, he went in, a young man, 26, he went into a heat stroke because um, that was just too much, uh, not enough rest, not enough water, and in the end, too much exposure to a um, high degree of, of uh, temperature. So most people affected will be more on the um, older side, um, in the sense that uh, most people will die, uh, will be uh, in their 60s or a little bit uh, younger if they've got several medical condition. And, um, uh, but some of them are, are uh, much younger than that. Um, we've seen um, people living on the street. We've seen uh, people with mental health problems uh, being uh, quite affected, going to emergency rooms, uh, hospitalized, and uh, some uh, died also. Thank you very much, Pierre. Uh, maybe we can talk about it in the second round a bit more. 
And now I'd like to turn to uh, Mit Shahin, and maybe we can talk about how the heat waves affect people in Turkey. Are they also increasing in Turkey? How often do we see them in Turkey? And also, uh, there's an article uh, by you and Pierre that has been published recently, um, Excess Mortality in Istanbul During Extreme Heat Waves Between uh, 2013 and 2017. Maybe, uh, can you talk about a bit about this study as well? Thank you. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, the first, maybe I, I should start with the awareness of heat waves uh, in Turkey. Uh, for example, as Pierre said, for Canada this year, for uh, Quebec this year, uh, in Istanbul, we also had uh, four heat waves this summer. And the first one uh, was quite early than you expect. It was in May. The first big heat wave was in May, and the second heat wave was in the end of June. So the, the first two heat waves were quite early. So they can be more deadly uh, in terms of uh, mortality effect, etc. Um, so why it is important to talk about heat waves? Because for many people, um, this is cultural mainly, that for many people, heat is not something bad, right? So uh, you like warm weather. You uh, always say, if the weather is warm and if it's really hot at, in the summers, uh, you, you say that, oh, it's a good weather. Uh, but if it's too hot and if, if, it, lasts, if it lasts uh, more than three, four days, uh, for example, for Istanbul in June and June, July and August, if it's um, about 30, 33, 32, 33 de three degrees, uh, so you don't have to have 40 degrees uh, of, of temperature. So even in 30 to uh, 33 degrees, if it lasts more than three, four days, so it's really deadly. Um, so we need to uh, really understand that uh, heat is uh, really um, harmful to health, uh, especially for older people and especially people with chronic diseases. And our study that you mentioned, uh, so we last year we did, uh, we, we published this uh, together with uh, PR's team in Canada and also uh, with our uh, public health uh, experts in Jarapasha Medical School. So we looked at the um, heat waves in five years and we have found that uh, specifically three heat waves in Istanbul in 2015, 16 and 17, um, 419 extra deaths uh, we uh, calculated. So that's pro this is probably one of the other problems about heat waves. Um, as a, if you really uh, want to look at it as a climate disaster, because think like a floods um, happening all, all the time in Istanbul, in uh, especially. Black Sea region and other regions in Turkey. So we are witnessing very big floods, extreme rainfalls, etc. And many people are dying because of the destruction caused by these floods. But in this kind of climate disasters, you see exactly uh, uh, how many people died and which people. So you know the names of those people. Uh, and in the biggest floods, you uh, witness, um, you know, these floods are killing something like 30 people, 40 people, sometimes less. Uh, and if you compare it with the heat waves, normally heat waves are killing more people. So, um, for example, in the same example in Istanbul, uh, more than 400 extra deaths um, we have found in Istanbul in 14 days. Uh, the the long uh, 14 days long heat waves in Istanbul in three years, we have lost uh, more than 400 people. But of course, we can calculate this number only by an epidemiological study afterwards. A couple of years later, we compare the uh, number of people who died during the heat waves comparing to the previous years. So you don't know the names of those people. And those people, most of those people are still the same risk groups, uh, older people, etc. Uh, but really, you don't know them. So I think this is one of the problems about the awareness uh, on the heat waves. And also in our study, we have found that the earlier heat waves, 
uh, the the most deadly heat wave was in 2016 June. So if heat wave uh, happened in June or May, so it is because people are not really accommodated to um, warmer uh, temperature yet, just after the colder or cooler months. So they are not really um, used to it, used to heat. So more people are fragile uh, because of the heat wave. So I think um, climate change is also um, increasing this risk because of because we know that uh, from a lot of studies uh, around the world that uh, also in the Mediterranean region um, a number of heat waves and the duration of heat waves are increasing not only the number but also the duration and the severity of the heat waves are increasing because of climate change and we we know this also from uh, many studies in Turkey that the number and severity of these heat waves increased a lot. Um, for example, one important study uh, done by a uh, Turkish meteorological uh, organization uh, that number of heat waves, the number of days with the heat waves uh, will increase uh, 78 days more than today if we don't stop climate change until the end of century. So what is 78 days? 78 days uh, basically is all summer months. So uh, in the coming decades, if we don't stop climate change, uh, according to today's uh, temperatures, today's references, uh, almost all the summer days will be uh, heat wave. So it's a big problem and now uh, starting with today, we need to uh, do something about that. Of course, starting with the raising awareness, but also taking precautions uh, before the heat waves. And um, I, I think we are uh, now talking about these action plans, etc. So we need to really put this to our agenda uh, for climate change, impacts of climate change. Yes, creating the awareness is also one of the first things because, as you are saying, the heat waves are killing more people, but we don't find out about them until very later. And yes. uh, now we can see that the duration and the number and the severity of these heat waves are increasing with this climate change, and it's it's continuing the climate crisis. And yeah. um, we, it is very essential now to develop some kind of heat warning systems and action plans in order to cope with these. Um, how can these plans can be de developed in the first place? Maybe Pierre, can you comment a little bit on how you did it? How you did this heat uh, health action plan in Quebec? Maybe you can share your experience with us. Yes, um, actually, the way it began was that um, in the uh, late '90s we we had a series of very violent. Uh, floods and um, something that might seem exotic to you, but uh, freezing rainstorm um, that uh, led to um, power failures in the midst of winter. Uh, so the government was already quite sensitized to the fact that the climate was changing. Um, and after that, we were quite impressed because of that uh, prior uh, sensitivity uh, to the, the the, the, the heat wave that happened in 2003 in France. So uh, we uh, realized we created at that time um, in Quebec a, um, a consortium for research and adaptation in climate change. And um, heat wave was, became one, uh, was considered as one of uh, extreme meteorological events that should be taken into account. Um, so we started at that time um, to uh, prepare a first action plan for Montreal, that was in 2004. And then we decided that the, the, the rest of the province in 2007 should be prepared too. So it became that heat became one of the hazards of interest, along with floods, along with uh, winter or summer storms or hurricanes uh, and, and that sort of situation. So we used the, the, the same system that uh, addresses those problems uh, usually. Um, and we began to do our, our studies to see what could be done. The heat action plan in itself uh, included an early warning system because already at that time we 
had some um, uh, studies showing that it could reduce substantially the, the number of, of uh, uh, fatalities, the number of people going to hospital or emergency rooms, uh, because simple measures can be teach, can be uh, promoted in the population, like just knowing in advance that um, it can be dangerous for you because you're older in itself, it is a risk factor because old people don't feel heat as well as younger people. Um, they don't often, they often uh, don't feel the thirst as much. Or, so you, you need to be aware of all those uh, little details so that people in advance can be told to drink more water than usually, uh, even if they don't feel thirsty, to avoid the heat, um, you know, uh, during the day. Um, do their their uh, their walks or exercise early in the morning or late in the uh, in the evening. So that kind of simple measures can reduce substantially uh, the number of people being affected. Moreover, what we did is to um, work with nurses and doctors in chronic care hospitals um, with the people in uh, kindergarten, so that they expose less the children to the heat. So there, there are several spots within a city that, if worn properly in advance with a list of things to do, um, can reduce substantially uh, the health burden uh, of a heat wave. Um, working closely with the meteorological service is also something important because um, the big heat waves that will kill people, you see them coming usually in advance, a week in advance. So you can be, <coughs> sorry, you, you can be warned in advance as a public health system and a civil protection system um, so that uh, you prepare that it's coming. We're not entirely sure, but it's going to be there in three days, in two days. Oh, it's canceled. But it's, it's better to be prepared and be ready to act rapidly in advance um, instead of waiting for the, the first under deaths to appear. So that's the approach that we've implemented in uh, 2010 for the, for the province. And it's difficult to implement because people tend to react instead of prevent. So um, our, our first regions, public health departments were awaiting for deaths. We had a, a, a system uh, to um, count the deaths and publish that early um, the morning after every day a number of uh, visits to emergency room, a number of people being mm -hmm. hospitalized. So you, you could see the numbers go up. And then we had to teach our own public health people that you, you need to act before that. You don't have to wait. You, you should, you should if you're doing your, your job well, you should not see those numbers increase. Um, so we had to teach our well-trained people to change their behavior and uh, do all those actions in prevention. There are some also to be done by doctors in their medical clinics because um, some medicine, some prescribed drugs can worsen a heat wave. If you're uh, treating someone for hypertension, uh, they're taking diuretics uh, that will dehydrate them, uh, that will uh, increase the odds of, of being affected by heat wave. And it's the same for some uh, neurological problems, uh, some epilep anti-epileptic drugs or, or some other drugs for uh, uh, mental health problems such as uh, bipolar disorder. Um, they, they can become very uh, high in the blood uh, when you don't take enough water. So that's all those situations need to be uh, um, identify um, an action plan, be prepared, and that we, we start sending all that information and promoting that in the media and, and within our uh, public health system uh, in order to prevent that um, fatalities happen. Um, we've done also a, a little study, um, self-reported problems during a heat wave. The ones we don't see, but that the, we, we found, and that we, we've done that also in Ontario, not only in Quebec, but about between 30 and 40% of people during a heat wave feel bad. Um, they feel that in their, their fatigue, um, they, they, uh, they're nauseous, they, they have uh, several problems. 
and 12% of them need in the week after to go see their doctor or pharmacist to adjust their medication or, or to seek treatment for, for some other ailment. So that's a, a huge cost to the, the health system. We've calculated that each wave for uh, Montreal, which is uh, about 4 million people, uh, would cost in the order of $50 million just in medical visits and pharmacists visit so that that's a you if you're multiplying the four or five every summer or a whole summer like uh, you may said um that means uh, hundreds of millions um cost uh, related to to heat so um that's the way it's been progressively implemented the good news is that it's um it reduces significantly all over the world here and in Bangladesh and France and uh, the UK and wherever you um, adopt such uh, early warning system and action plans, um, they reduce uh, dramatically by about 50 to uh, 75 percent uh, the fatalities. So they're, they're cheap to run. Usually you can run a system for, for a country in terms of information, data, uh, aggregation and warnings and everything for about two, three hundred thousand um, uh, dollars per year. Uh, but you save hundreds of people for that price, which is uh, really cheap, really effective. Um, Bangladesh is the most impressive uh, success story. Uh, I believe they, they reduced by 67,000 deaths uh, the year after the system was implemented. Uh, and it's not because they're rich. Uh, it's not because they have lots of, of, uh, of means to reduce uh, those problems, um, but it's uh, highly effective. Thank you very much. I think those are very good examples because when we think about our own uh, society and we see that Bangladesh even also made this work and it's very successful and like uh, the fatalities are prevented by 50 to 75 percent is a is a big number and uh, but as you are saying in Quebec like uh, it is now the heat wave is now treated as an hazard maybe when we look at Istanbul it we don't really treat it as an hazard yet and we don't really have that kind of a mechanism to uh, prevent ourselves from that maybe in which side when we look at the side when we look at Istanbul I know I know that you're a member of the city council also Istanbul and you've been quite active in these fields uh, preparing all those necessary information for the local authorities in order for them to prepare heat warning systems and increase local awareness in Istanbul. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about your experience and how Istanbul and uh, we can actually prepare for it and what are the local authorities uh, should work together with? Yes, uh, in, actually in Turkey, um, there, is a, there is an awareness for the impacts of climate change in the local level. So um, both from the central to the local level that um, first the environment, environmental ministry is asking uh, all uh, local governments to prepare uh, climate change action plans and to do something uh, against the impacts of climate change. And we know many uh, municipalities, including Istanbul, already prepared um, climate change action plans, uh, both for mitigation and adaptation. But the problem here is, as I said in the beginning, that uh, heat waves are um, not really considered one of the worst uh, impacts. So you can find the heat waves as one of the impacts of climate change, but not with a detail and not with a specific um prevention plan or something like that so beginning uh, in order to begin uh, this kind of preparation uh, as uh, pi already said in the very beginning that we need to uh, define heat wave first of all because you don't have a universal um, definition of heat wave so you need to define heat waves locally so you need really to uh, define, for example, for Istanbul, you need to define what is an heat wave after which, for example, in July or in August, after what temperature and how many days this um, heat waves are causing more deaths. So in order to understand this kind of an information, you know, in order to understand 
uh, this specific information. So you need to make some epidemiological studies. So you need to collect data first. So the central authorities and local authorities uh, should uh, not maybe, they don't have to do this by themselves, but at least they need to provide data to the researchers in order to understand uh, what is the threshold for heat waves, for example, for Istanbul. So this is this should be the first step. And after that, um, as P Pia said, uh, that together with the meteorological organization, so meteorological organization is already doing this. So meteorological organization, as you know, time to time, they warn uh, society that he, uh, excess heat is coming. But here there is, there is a, an important difference between excess heat and heat waves. Uh, extreme heat or excess heat is um, something like more wake, you know, that uh, you can say that, oh, the weather is very warm uh, in these days, but you really don't know if it is uh, in the uh, level of heat waves, because if you don't really define the, le the thresholds of heat waves, you don't really understand which days in the coming days, for example, will be in the heat waves and in which days you need to take extra measures in order to prevent the deaths and other hospitalization and other health effects of health impacts of heat waves. So the first thing uh, we should do is doing some studies, some research about defining heat waves and then um, um, creating a kind of um, early warning system to um, make people aware of um, what they should do, like uh, very simple measures, as Pia said, that like um, protect yourselves from uh, excess heat or uh, don't go outside if you are in the risk group or uh, drink more water or these kind of things. And these, these things, um, I think, should be done first by the health authorities by the public health authorities in the central level, but also in the local level. So that's why as IPC, we are trying to um, trying to uh, do something together with the Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality, the authorities in the Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality, for them to prepare uh, some uh, warning systems against heat waves because they have the means of communication. They, they are easily, they can easily uh, reach people to um, warn them uh, against the, the coming the heat waves in the coming days, for example. So they can um, use their billboards, they can use their screens all over the metro lines or uh, bus stops or whatever. So they can put some warning uh, signs uh, about what you should do. Uh, if you are a fragile uh, or if you are in the risk group. So that's, um, I think, is, that can easily be done and it's very important to uh, carry out. One thing more about the local authorities that um, now people are more aware of uh, about the heat island effect. So in the cities, uh, we have something which is uh, really magnifying the impacts of heat waves. And this is if you are living in an area of a lot of tall buildings and asphalt and, you know, concrete buildings, etc. then you are uh, feeling the heat um, much higher than if you are living in uh, somewhere uh, with the green areas. So, for example, in Istanbul, if you are living in Maslak or Mejdiyeker or whatever, these very concrete uh, places with the concrete buildings. So you have experiencing an heat island effect. So um, one of the things municipalities should do is uh, trying to reduce the effects of uh, heat islands by green fields, etc. But also um, by all these other public policies, they need to reduce uh, urban heat island effect in general. So this is one of the things uh, local governments should do uh, against uh, the health impacts of heat waves. Thank you very much. And now we can go to the last round, maybe two or one to two minutes. Uh, you can have your closing remarks. We can start with Pierre and then continue with Shahin. And uh, maybe 
I can ask you, Pihar, but you can also, uh, of course, comment on anything that you want or uh, Umit's uh, work also. Um, what are the most effective mechanisms that the local authorities used in Quebec that prevented uh, or helped people uh, coping with these heat waves? What do you think were the most effective ones? But you can also comment on other things as well. Yeah, just a, just a little comment on the importance uh, of urban heat island that uh, Yemit mentioned, because uh, uh, on, on top of being hotter than the rest of the cities, uh, uh, it, it uh, is also where the air pollution is, is the worst often because of the uh, traffic. If you've got roads and, and concrete, that, that, then you will find cars. In itself, they produce heat and air pollution too. So there's going to be worse for, for those parts of the city. So um, the, the one extra step is to go into preventive, uh, preventative measures, um, like greening is important, but also uh, promoting active transport by, by uh, bicycle or, or uh, by foot and offering connections within the city so that people can use easily public transit and and their bike or whatever so that that's um that's a normal evolution that you want to reduce heat within the city and that is doable um you you already have probably um white roofs and and white buildings uh, in good proportion that we don't have here so that's a, a useful measure um and and to reduce uh, in total the 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 number as much as possible number of rows and keep the water within the city when it rains so that it can evaporate the energy the heat so all those measures are are effective in the, in the long term um, about the heat uh, action plans i believe the importance is to have a, a graduated approach. Uh, so you, you begin by simple measures. If uh, you have the, uh, the notion that the heat wave will last longer, then you intensify, you repeat your message after two days that it's going to be, it's going to become more dangerous since we've been two or three days in the heat wave already. And now people should be more attention um, you should go see your your family members that are handicapped or that cannot care for themselves you you should check at your neighbor's door that that is one part of our plan after three four days and in the end uh, we have identified hot spots uh, urban heat island in deprived neighborhoods, poor people. Uh, and in the end, we send social workers, and let's say it's the fifth day of the heat wave. So we send people, policemen, uh, firemen, social workers to knock at doors. Um, a couple of years ago, we did 42,000 visits at home in those pre-identified high risk zones of the city so that we can uh, uh, avoid leaving people alone in their place just uh, uh, dehydrated and, and slowly dying because nobody cares about them so it needs to be uh, 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 organized in a way that um, if the heat wave is getting worse or lasting longer um, that you've got some extra steps um, to, to avoid this we, we're giving water on the, on the street uh, for, for people living on the street and that kind of stuff is also organized and needs to be um, taken into account uh, as the uh, heat wave uh, progress. Thank you very much. Now you have the floor Nick, for two minutes. <laughs> okay, uh, one thing maybe is just a bit just to repeat what Pierre said about air pollution. Um, I think that's very important remark um, because uh, the first reason is both is amplifying the effects of the other. So uh, especially in the summer days, you have an ozone uh, pollution in the cities, mainly because of car traffic and also heat. Heat and car traffic is uh, causing ozone pollution and it's its effects on the lungs and um, cardiovascular system is also um, amplifying the effects of heat waves. This is one, um, let's say, similarity or the connection between heat waves and air pollution. And the second connection, I think, is both are silent killers. So 
um, you don't really see who died or who was hospitalized because of air pollution and in the same uh, sense because of heat waves so you don't the the doctors or nurses in the hospitals or emergency services they don't really look at it in this way they see a patient with a cardiac for example infection or infection uh, mi or something like this or uh, an asthma attacks but they don't really uh, know if this is um, becoming because of air pollution or be because of heat uh, they just treat it and they don't report it like this because there is no such a um, system but both these all these kind of things the pulmonary conditions cardiovascular conditions uh, and many diseases are caused by uh, heat waves and caused by air pollution as all we know that uh, who world health organization um, always you know they um, did this research a couple of years ago that every year more than seven million people are killed because of the effects of air pollution in the world so uh, but we don't really know um, exactly who uh, who is killed because of air pollution and in the same sense i think we need to take into account that both air pollution and uh, heat waves are silent killers and we need to um, take precautions before we experience a similar um, very big heat waves like uh, one in Europe in 2003 uh, because only after that big heat wave in 2003 many countries uh, start to take action I think in Turkey we need to take action um, beforehand and before we experience such a big disaster because of uh, heat and I think unfortunately it will come because of climate change. So um, I think we need to, both from the central government and local governments, uh, we need to take action uh, as soon as possible. Thank you very much. I hope the steps initiated by uh, IPC and by Pierre Goslin, by Umit Shahin is going to pave the way for preventive measures to take place within those local authorities. I would like to thank you very much, both of you, Pierre Goslin and Mitch Shain, for being with us today and having this uh, informative talk about heat waves. And thank you for our listeners. And we will see you next week on Thursday again. Goodbye.